From the first video in the polymeric materials series, we know that the word polymer can be used to describe a wide range of materials. From the rubber tires on our cars, to the nylon fibers making up the carpets in our homes, and the Teflon coating on our nonstick pans. They are lightweight materials that can be formed into a variety of different shapes and will never rust. While these materials can appear to be quite different from each other, on the molecular level, they have something in common. They are macromolecules, which are very long molecules made up of repeating units called monomers. Depending on how these large molecules react when processed, they can be considered thermoplastics or thermosets. In the second installment of the series, we'll discuss that important distinction. A thermoset is a polymer that experiences both a physical and a chemical change during a non-reversible curing process. Thermosets start out as low molecular weight compounds, which allow for low pressure processing due to low viscosity of the material. Then they cross-link to form a matrix, which is essentially one large macromolecule. An example of this is epoxy resin, which starts out as two liquids. When they are mixed, they react and cure to create a hard, glassy solid. Thermosets can either be rubber, with a glass transition temperature below ambient temperature, or plastic, with a glass transition temperature above ambient temperature. In this video, we'll be focusing on thermoset plastics. Thermosets get their strength, excellent creep resistance, compression set resistance, and other properties from cross-linking. Thermosets are more resistant to heat, chemicals, and dimensional changes than comparable thermoplastics, and their flammability is lower than many thermoplastics. They typically have higher hardness, stiffness, and compression strength than thermoplastics, with the disadvantage that they might shatter when under compression. They can tolerate higher filler loading than thermoplastics due to the low viscosity of the monomers, which allows for long fiber length reinforcements. This is an important advantage because longer fiber lengths can support more of the load that is placed on the part, thus increasing the part's modulus, strength, and impact resistance. Drawbacks include long cycle times and secondary operations such as post-curing and trimming a flash. These can increase production costs. Many joining techniques that work with thermoplastics do not work with thermosets because they cannot easily be remelted. Therefore, joining techniques are limited to mechanical joints and adhesives. There are also health concerns associated with handling raw materials and thermoset parts are more brittle when compared to thermoplastics and less flexible due to cross-linking. Thermosets can be formed with compression molding, injection molding, pultrusion, casting, resin transfer molding, extrusion, and filament winding processes, among others. Common examples of thermoset plastic parts include Corian countertops, fiberglass bathtubs and boat hulls, binders and adhesives such as in plywood, insulating foams, and electrical insulators. A thermoplastic is a polymer that experiences only a physical change when processed. It will soften when heated and become rigid when cooled in a reversible process. This means that it can be recycled via thermomechanical means. Thermoplastics have greater ductility than hard thermosets, which allows for design features such as leaf springs and snap fingers. They have relatively low processing costs and it is easy to manufacture high volumes of thermoplastic parts with high precision. Parts that would be expensive and time consuming to make out of metal or other materials can be injection molded from thermoplastics quickly and affordably. These parts are easy to decorate with in-mold labels or paints and join to other parts with adhesives, ultrasonic welding, spin welding, solvent welding, and other methods. While thermoplastics rarely show catastrophic cracking and compression, they may distort from their original shape. Examples include flattening of appliance casters or loss of interference with a mating part. Thermoplastics are more susceptible to creep and stress concentration effects than thermosets. They are particularly sensitive to creep rupture when hoop stress is present. Plastic parts often have weld lines around holes, such as those in screw bosses, which can increase the risk of creep rupture. Longitudinal cracks along plastic pen caps and cracks and screw bosses that occur when flathead screws are used to assemble plastic parts are examples of this type of failure. When designing thermoplastic parts, it's important to use only screws that are intended for use with plastics as they are designed to reduce stresses in the part. 
Other concerns include sensitivity to heat and chemical attack and poor dimensional stability when compared to thermosets or metals. Also, thermal expansion of thermoplastic materials is high when compared to other commonly used materials. This is especially important when assemblies include metal and glass parts which do not expand and contract as much as thermoplastics. If an assembly includes mixed materials, the design must allow for movement of the thermoplastic component. Processing methods include injection molding, extrusion, thermoforming, blow molding, roto molding, and many others. Examples of thermoplastic parts include eyeglass frames, Happy Meal toys, grocery bags, food packaging, kitchen appliance housings, garden trowels, garden hoses, automotive window seals, gas tanks, power tool housings, hard shell suitcases, overhead bins and aircraft, autoclavable medical devices, kayaks, and many more. In this video, we learned that thermosets are polymeric materials which cross-link to become permanently rigid during a non-reversible curing process, whereas thermoplastics can be heated and reprocessed many times. Thermosets are more resistant to heat, chemical attack, and creep but they cannot be easily recycled due to cross-linking. Thermoplastics are easy to manufacture, decorate, and join to other parts, but are more susceptible to long-term creep deformation, although they may benefit from being generally more flexible when compared to thermosets. When choosing a material for a specific application, these properties should be considered to ensure that the part will survive the environment and external forces that it is exposed to. In the next video, we'll take a closer look at thermoplastics, which can be broken down into two categories, semicrystalline and amorphous resins. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button to let us know and comment below with any questions or topics you would like to have covered on the channel. Also, remember to subscribe so you don't miss out on any of our new content. If you have a specific problem you would like to discuss with one of our plastics experts, please reach out. Our contact information is in the description box below. We'll see you in the next video.